So you have traffic running, but how do you put Docker and non-Docker apps behind traffic? Let's find out. Welcome back Geek Army, Anand here once again. This is it, this is the climax. We're gonna put some apps behind traffic today. It was a long wait to get to this point, but I promise you it's going to be worth it when we get done today. But first, just a few housekeeping notes. As I have said, like a broken record many times, I've put in a lot of effort and money into making these videos and every little bit of support from you helps. So please like, subscribe and hit the notification bell so you know when my future videos come out. And more importantly, check out the membership options I have on my website so I can continue to do what I really love doing. Okay, back to the topic. If you haven't watched my previous videos, please check out the link to the playlist in the description below. If you ever feel lost, that link will come in very handy and it will be very hard to find such detailed videos on this topic. So far, we have a wonderful traffic version 3 dashboard running. In my last video, we saw how to use middlewares and middleware chains to make it even better and add some security. Now, let's finish it off by putting some apps behind traffic. In this video as well, I will be using my Docker Bash aliases to simplify Docker and Docker Compose commands. If you do not know what I'm talking about, check out this link that will take you to the guide on my website that explains everything or check out my GitHub repository where I have all my Docker Bash aliases listed for you. Now we're ready for what you guys came here for. Let's start putting some applications behind traffic. It is really simple. We're gonna start off from where we ended at the end of my Ultimate Docker Media Server. I think we had Portainer, we had Jellyfin, we had Dozo, maybe Homepage as the apps that were available through the web. So we're gonna pick up one or two maybe, depending on the time, maybe a few more and put those things behind traffic. Maybe I won't do all four of them, maybe one or two, uh, because I do want to show you how you can put non-Docker services behind traffic because all four of them that I just showed you are Docker services, right? So let's just make sure that our middlewares are in effect. So if I go in here to the middlewares tab, you do see that our chains are active right now. So we are good to go with the chains. Let's go back to my terminal. So if I do DPS, which is basically sudo docker ps, it shows only two of my services are running. And if I go to my master docker compost file, which I haven't opened yet, so I should open it. Let's let's navigate back to my Docker root folder. There it is. If you don't know what a master Docker compost file is, it's like an index file that pulls in all the individual compost files that you have for different services. As you can see, we have the network at the top, we have the secrets block at the big in the middle, and then we have the include block, which includes all the different compost files from different folders, in this case, the compost folder. So I explained all of this in detail in my previous videos. Check those videos out if you're interested or confused here. Okay, now let's do this because Portainer has already been installed. It's just not been activated. So we'll have to uncomment this and save this. We saved it. And now what I'm going to do is, unfortunately, Portainer is a bad example, but I will tell you why. Let's do it anyways. Okay, so we activated it. Now I'll have to start my stack. Two services are already running, Portainer is not. So if I do sudo docker compose up dash D with the file path included, I can do that, but I, I'm gonna use my bash alias. As I said that, you can see there are some services that are already running and those that are not running are starting right now. Let's make sure that Portainer is actually up. Okay, so if you remember the IP address or the IP address of my, I can't type while I'm talking, 187 was the IP address. And if I type 9000, I should see Portainer. No, thank you, Microsoft Edge. Here, right here is the Portainer login page. I haven't really created anything, but what I'm gonna do right now is we're gonna put traffic behind one of the chains. Unfortunately, in my experience, Portainer doesn't work well with basic authentication. The pop-up is gonna keep coming and coming and coming and you will have to keep logging in again and again for every screen. So Portainer is a bad example to put behind basic 
authentication. We're gonna still put Portainer behind traffic, but just not with basic authentication. So how do we do that? For this, you know what? I'm gonna head over to my uh, GitHub repo so you can, you can see how you can copy paste code. So let's copy over Docker labels. So how do we put Docker services behind traffic? It's using labels. So let's copy the labels section of it. Everything except that labels section should already exist based on the previous videos that you may have followed. So we'll copy paste that. There are a few things that you need to edit. The first one is the domain name variable, which is domain name underscore one. So we're gonna do that. Now we do not have Google OAuth installed yet. So we're gonna put no auth because as I said, Portainer does not work with basic auth. So we did change the chain and then what else do we change here? I think everything is okay, except maybe for you to put any service behind traffic, you have to have the service as a part of the traffic network. What is the traffic network? If you remember from my previous video, it's T3 proxy. So we are going to add Portainer as a part of this network right there. So I think we added that, let's save it. I'm gonna save it right now. And while we're at it, let's just add one more. Homepage is a good example because the syntax on that one is slightly different and it's nice for you guys to see how I use it. So homepage right there. Once again, we'll copy the labels and we are going to open the homepage Docker Compose as we did for Portainer. And once it opens, we're gonna paste it right there. Once again, the domain name variable, we're gonna change it to that. We do not have OAuth, so in this case, we're gonna put it behind basic auth. So we change that. Now, we do need to add the traffic network, so we'll add traffic proxy. If you don't add traffic proxy, you might get a gateway timeout error. And this is because traffic cannot reach Portainer container or the web interface, and you're gonna get a gateway timeout. Again, maybe this is something that I will cover in that next video that I just mentioned a few minutes back on troubleshooting traffic. So let's save this. Now, one difference here is, notice this syntax right here is different from what I had for Portainer. But for Portainer, I had just portainer.simplehomelab.com. For homepage, I am using just the root domain and the www domain name. So basically homepage is like an entry point into my home lab. That's the first page. So I just want simplehomelab.com to take me to my homepage interface. Same way www.simplehomelab.com goes to the homepage interface. So let's save this as well. We saved two different things. So let's restart. Once again, these are not dynamic services. We changed the Docker Compose file. So we will have to recreate Fortainer homepage using my bash aliases that would be dc red portainer and homepage let's wait for those to be created the rest of it should already be up and running so we are going to ignore that let's head over to my google chrome and let's type portainer.simplehomelab.com voila there it is so we are here with the proper ssl certificate you can see this the connection is secure and the certificate is valid and it should be from let's encrypt so we are good to go then, then let's also try just simplehomelab.com, okay? 404, not found. Why is that? Oh, I know why. I think whenever you see a 404, that means the service is not reachable or is away, is not available. I think home page takes a, just a little bit of time to get started. So let's give it a few more seconds and let's refresh it. Actually, now it seems to be up. There you go. So I was just impatient. So if I do www.simplehomelab.com, that should also take me to my homepage. So there you go, it's done. I'm gonna show you one more example now, something that's not running in my Docker host. As I mentioned, I have several Docker hosts. So I'm gonna pick a service that's running on a different Docker host. Now, what I'm about to describe is something you can also do for services running on the Docker host itself. Even the ones that are running on Docker itself, you can do it. There are so many different ways to do it. This is why it sometimes is overwhelming. Here, let's take something that's running on a different Docker host, and we're gonna try to put it behind traffic, which is running on a different machine. Let's see how to do that. Okay, for this, we will have to use file providers. 
file providers as I explained are the files that go into the rules folder of traffic and are dynamic so traffic really picks them up just like that no need to restart and all the routes should already be established for this we're going to head over to my github under traffic 2 or traffic 3 the syntax is pretty much the same you can go to any of the folders here into the rules folder you will see several examples of file providers so anything that starts with app dash is a file provider for an app that may be running on the docker host or a different machine but you see the middlewares, you see the chains, and then app is just the router and service in the middleware definition for an app. So let's pick anything. In this case, we're gonna pick something that is running on HTTP. We're not gonna pick any service that is running on an HTTPS protocol. And those would be services that have a self-signed certificate like Unify Controller, Proxmox, Web Interface, things like that. Those require a different way of doing things. I don't want to make this video too long. I will cover that in my next video. So watch out for that. So for now, let's pick something. Let's take, uh, let's say, AdGuard Home. We, In fact, you know what? I do have our AdGuard running, so we can even put AdGuard behind traffic. So let's do that right now. So I copied that script, our YAML code, and let's go over to my SFTP browser right there, create a new file. And we're gonna call this app add guard home dot yaml. Okay, so we have add guard home dot yaml created. Let's open this one up and we're gonna paste the file provider code that we just copied. We have to make some edits. Let's just call it add guard. If you want to change all the names for add guard as they are appearing here. And so here I'm calling it AG for subdomain. That's fine. The only thing we here we need to change is my domain name variable, which is domain name underscore one. And I will quickly go back to my traffic.yaml right here in my previous traffic guide. If you guys remember, we passed in domain name underscore one as an environment variable into the traffic container. At that time, I didn't explain what this meant. I just said, this is beyond the scope of this guide. Let's talk about it in the follow up guide. And that's what I'm doing right now. We are passing in the domain name as a variable into the container and it becomes available for traffic to use in file providers like so. In this way, you don't have to put your hard code, your domain name in and we can use the variable to call the domain name. So, but the syntax is slightly different. This is how we're gonna, this whole thing is actually the variable that takes that domain information from the domain name that underscore one variable. I hope you guys got it, but okay, let's leave it at that. Now we do not have OAuth installed, so I'm gonna change it to basic auth. Okay, and what else do we need to change here? Now, this should be the IP address of the machine that is running at guard home. So this would be so one dot, oh, I, it's one dot one or two, I think. Let's try it and see what happens. So and nothing else to change here. Of course, if you're doing the same thing for another service, feel free to change the name add guard, just as highlighted here in three of the locations where it appears. There's normally three different locations where you have to change if you're using the templates that I'm providing and you have to change the domain and you have to change the URL and you have to change the middleware. So that's it. So let's save this. And I'm gonna say yes, since it's a dynamic configuration, it's traffic should automatically pick up and let's see if it did right here. So I'm gonna click on that right now and I can see a lot of different things here, the, the middleware it's using. So let's head over to my Chrome right here that's open. I'm gonna say ag.simplehomelab.com and I get my login prompt. I'm gonna log in and nope, edge or Chrome. I don't want to save the password. So here you go. So I am, on my AdGuard home web interface. Now, so this is how you put apps that are not running on the Docker host itself, or is running on a different machine, or is not a Docker app, but has a web interface. You can put those services behind traffic. Now, very quickly, if I, if I can show you, um, if we were to do the same thing using auto traffic, all you have to do is go over to reverse proxy and you have an option to put an external app behind traffic. 
in this case I will provide the subdomain as AG and and the IP address where the service is running 192.168.1.102 and probably there's a protocol HTTP protocol so the port number port number was 80 and that's it now auto traffic will automatically create everything for you all the routes for you it's so simple to put apps behind traffic using auto traffic today we covered a lot of things i apologize for it it became another long video but i hope you guys find this kind of stuff interesting if you do find it interesting let me know in the comment section you want me to do shorter videos longer videos let me know your opinion i am really interested to hear back from the community otherwise i really hope this was very useful watch out for my next video because we didn't look at apps that do have self-signed certificates like Unify Controller or Proxmox Web Interface. We'll work on those in my next video. Until then, I thank you very much for your support and thank you for staying this long. Go Geek Army.